Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Midway United Methodist Church. I'm Pedro Silva. I'm the communications pastor here at Midway. It's uh, it's great to see you this morning. <coughs> Excuse me. It's uh, it's a little wet outside, right? Yes. But it's a beautiful day that the Lord has made for us. It's a joy to welcome all of you here to worship here uh, in person and also online. Um, our brothers and sisters online are uh, welcome to, to, to be with Midway this morning and worship the Lord. Uh, if you are a member of this church or if you are a regular attendee, please, please register your attendance uh, on your uh, tear out and also, also on your bulletin. I have a few announcements this morning. Uh, uh, music for missions, August 27th. It's uh, less than a week away. And so uh, adults uh, and children are welcome. Uh, please purchase your tickets today. T today's the last day, isn't it? Yes. Uh, so all, um, all proceeds, uh, proceed benefits, will, will, will benefits uh, rise against hunger and in our music ministry as well. August 28th, next Sunday at 6 p.m., we'll host a class called Discovering Midway. It's a very great class that Pastor Amanda put together, and this class is perfect if you want to learn more information about the mission and ministry of Midway, and if you are considering membership here at church, a light dinner will be served. Please RSVP to Pastor Amanda at a at yeah <laughs> amanda at midwayumc.org that's or it or you can just tell me <laughs> just, yeah that's a simple simple way to do it so uh, rise against hunger september 8, uh, 18th and 9 a.m we'll worship god through service together and it's uh our goal is to pack 30 thousand meal packs and we need 100 or more volunteers to do that we still have plenty of space for you to come and serve, and because right now we have only 39. Oh, no. So um, please sign up now. It's uh, uh, the link is on your midweek. You should have received a link there uh, on your email. Now uh, I would like to once again welcome you to join us in worship.
the Lord calls us, calls to us to go into the world. We will go. God commands us, speak as God commands. We will speak. God assures us, do not be afraid. We trust that God will deliver us. Amen. God who knows us, in Jeremiah, we read how you formed our souls long before anyone knew us. You consecrated us for kingdom work long before our birth. You've called us to be a prophet to the nations. We know that life moves in cycles of growth and destruction, picking and pulling, building and overthrowing. Yet we may rest in the assurance that we are known and loved by God, who creates beautiful things. Amen. And if you would remain standing and turn in your hymnal to number 380 as we sing together, There's Within My Heart a Melody. standing as we declare what we believe in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our God, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified dead and there. The third day he rose from the dead, and he ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From this he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
you sing with me? have a moment of quiet reflection to gather in the same spirit of prayer and as we pray today we uh, you are invited to come uh, to the altar to pray um, let us pray for uh, Mary Monford's family uh, she passed this uh, past week and her funeral will be on Tuesday this Tuesday at four o'clock here at church, here in, chap uh, in, this, uh, in the historical chapel. Holy God, you have created us with purpose. You have given each of us gifts and talents that we might use to bring forth your kingdom to this earth. We confess that we self, selfishly use our gifts for personal gain, forgetting that they too are means of tithing, a means of uh, giving back to you and to the world. You have bestowed on us unique abilities to, that, that allow us to, to help your children across the world, the poor, the orphan, the widow, the immigrant and the oppressed. How beautiful a gift you have given us. Forgive us when we forget to share it, Lord. As you did for the prophet Jeremiah, put your hand on our mouths, our hands, our feet, our minds, all the different parts of us so that we may speak may act, even write or teach, comfort, and share your good news. May our magnific magnificently different voices carry the incredible message of your love, your redemption, and of your grace. 
we are all called to be prophets. Prophets to share you with everyone. And as we continue praying, we also pray the prayer that your son Jesus Christ taught us to pray. Our Father, Our Father who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy, thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come. Thy, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Before we uh, start with the sermon, I do want to, um, you, you might notice a new face in the choir this morning. Um, this is Jared Brooks. He is our new worship leader for 11 o'clock, but he also, he can sing. So he <laughs> has agreed to join the choir as well. So um, would y'all welcome him? We are really excited to have him here and to um, be in ministry with him. Would you pray with me? Almighty God, we thank you for this day and we thank you for this time that you have given us. Lord, I just pray. I pray this morning that your presence would be felt throughout this place. And God, that your words would be the words that we hear. And that those words would transform our hearts. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. I think one of the things that I, I talk to people most about when, when they have a, a question about God or about theology or faith is, how can I feel God's presence? Or I don't feel God with me during this time. I think that's something that we all long for. We, we all want to feel God's presence. We all want to know that God is with us and that God's leading us. We want to experience that presence of God around us because we know that that's what's promised in Scripture. And we see examples in Scripture uh, of God's promise being present or God's presence being promised. And, and sometimes we look around and we say, well, God, where are you? I don't feel your presence. I don't feel your guidance. Today we're going to look at Jeremiah chapter 1, verses 4 through 10. Um, if you've got your Bibles, go ahead and open it. Uh, I'd love for you to follow along and read with me. Uh, if you've got your Bible app on your phone, you can open it there as well. Uh, but a little bit of, of background. We have been looking at the prophets, the prophets the past couple months. We have talked about Amos, about Hosea, about Isaiah, and now we're looking at the prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah preached to the southern kingdom of Judah around Jerusalem, and his message, his book spans a long time. His message began with a warning. It was a warning to the people of Jerusalem, a warning to the people of Judah, hey, you need to, to shape up. And then he predicted the destruction of, of Jerusalem and exile of the people of Babylon to, to Babylon. And then he also issued a word of hope as well. After the destruction, after the exile, he spoke hope to those who were in exile. And he spoke judgment on Babylon. So as you can see, Jeremiah probably wasn't the most popular person <laughs> in Jerusalem. I mean, if you go around telling folks <laughs> what you built is going to be torn down <laughs> and you're actually going to be taken away and held captive, you're probably not a popular person, right? And, and this thing is he was expected to preach this unpopular message, um, this difficult one, this message of destruction. He was expected to preach to the people about how they had broken the covenant and the consequences of those actions. 
Can you see why Jeremiah may have been a little nervous about his ministry and about being called by God to preach to the people? Our scripture this morning, it highlights this call story of Jeremiah. It tells us about how Jeremiah was called and the tools that God gave him to, to do the work. Jeremiah chapter 1, verses, one through, verses 4 through 10. The word of the Lord came to me saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Alas, sovereign Lord, I said, I do not know how to speak. I am too young. But the Lord said to me, do not say I am too young. You must go to everyone I send you to and say whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you and will rescue you, declares the Lord. Then the Lord reached out his hand and touched my mouth and said to me, I have put my words in your mouth. See, today I appoint you over the nations and kingdoms to uproot and tear down, to destroy and overthrow, to build and to plant. This is the word of God for you, the people of God. Thanks Thanks be to God. You can see that God called Jeremiah when he was very young. Some sources say he may have been 13 years old, but, but most... Uh, Most sources say he was between 17 and 20. Still very young if we remember that Hosea was called uh, when he was uh, to be married to Gomer. And Amos was called after he had a successful successful job as a a fruit, um, taking care of fruits in the vineyard. But 17 to 20, if you think about where you were at that age being called to send the message that he was sent was very intimidating. Jeremiah needed the assurance that God would be with him throughout his ministry. Jeremiah, at at such a young age, already knew he couldn't do it alone, and so he asked God, God, I, I need your presence with me. I need you to be with me and to lead me. And I can, we can see that God promises to do just that. If you look back at verse 8, you see that God, God responds to Jeremiah and he says, Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you and will rescue you, declares the Lord. God, at the moment he calls Jeremiah, promises, promises presence with him. Furthermore, I think uh, Jeremiah might need a little bit of reminding. We see in verse 5 when God says, he says, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. God was with Jeremiah before Jeremiah even knew it. God was with Jeremiah before Jeremiah was Jeremiah. And I think this presence of God was with him all along, whether Jeremiah knew it. Was God not revealing himself to Jeremiah throughout his childhood? Or was the child Jeremiah not aware of God's presence? I I think maybe it was the latter. That Jeremiah just wasn't looking We don't, know, we don't know for sure the answer to that, but what we do know throughout Scripture gives us a good idea. Because we see God's promise throughout Scripture, God's promise of presence. And then God tells him, I'm with you. I will rescue you. I will put my words in your mouth. Let me tell you, that's what every preacher wants to hear from God. I will put my words in your mouth. And throughout the the chapters of Jeremiah and from history, we see. We see that God was present. Jeremiah predicted the fall of Jerusalem. 
the exile to Babylon. And Jeremiah also preached the hope that was to come, that the exiles would eventually one day return to the promised land. The thing is, God makes this promise to each of us. God promises to each of us to be present, to give us the tools that we need to go do whatever God has called us. You see, our, our understanding of this has maybe evolved over time, where we see Jeremiah has a, a spoken word from God we might not always experience that. If you go back to the Old Testament, the Hebrews experienced the presence of God as a, a cloud by day and fire by night. There was a physical presence of God that they could see in front of them. And that same presence was the presence that came down onto Sinai. When Moses went up to receive the laws, you, you, if you read in scripture, you see that there was an earthquake when God was talking to Moses and the people, the people were afraid because back then the belief was any natural disaster was, was a theophany, a visible representation of God being present. And so they were, they were so fearful that God was, was there and that what might God do to them? But then also remember that, that Moses requested to see God's face and God granted him a, a little bit to see his backside. Um, and so when, when Moses came down, after spending 40 days with God, his, faith, his face was shining. There was a visible presence on Moses that, that he had been with God, that he had experienced God. It frightened the people. The presence of God frightened these people. That same cloud came down on the tabernacle once they had it built. And when, when Moses or the priest would go into the tabernacle, they would, they would see or, or hear the presence of God enter that tabernacle. Now, if we move to the New Testament, we see that there was the presence of God in human form. Emmanuel, God with us. We celebrate this at Christmas, that God came down to be present in human form with us. And even after Jesus ascended into heaven, we see the promise of the Holy Spirit that, that we would no longer have to look outside at a, a theophany or a, a natural occurrence of God, that we would no longer have to look to, to an individual person who was present right there in front of us to experience God's presence, but we could experience the presence of God within us through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the presence of God within each person. So it's not limited to this outside source, but it's within us. So how are we able to recognize that? If I sit here and tell you God is within you, God's presence is within you. I'm sure some of you might say, in theory, yes, but I don't always feel it. I don't always experience God's presence. You know, if, if we had a little Jiminy Cricket sitting right there on our shoulder or a little um, angel that tells us every now and then, hey, this is, this is the way that you should do it. Or you need to go talk to that person. That would be great, wouldn't it? Things, it, things would be so much easier. And, and life, we would just know exactly God's presence. We would know exactly what we're supposed to do. But um, I can tell. You guys are looking at me like, oof. <laughs> That's wishful thinking. And yeah, it is. I think many of us do expect that Jiminy Cricket voice, though. Many of us expect God to speak to us. It's what, it's what we've read about in scriptures. We need an audible voice of someone saying, Pedro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah? 
but I don't know that that is an actual way that God is going to speak to us now. How do we recognize that presence of God within us? How do we recognize the voice of God as we go throughout this life? Well, it's not that easy. I wish I could say, like, like there was an audible voice. I think God reveals God's self to us differently in ways that each of us can recognize. I had a lesson in this in God's presence this week. I am a planner. If you didn't know that, I'm telling you now. I like to plan ahead. When I begin to work on sermons, I begin on Monday mornings. I like to look at my Bibles. I like to look at my commentaries. I like to read the scripture a couple times. I like to look and see what other pastors have pre who've preached on it have said about this scripture. This week on Thursday, I got a text message from Jenny saying, hey, I just tested positive for COVID. <laughs> so please pray for her. <laughs> Definitely please pray for her. Now, I, I thought to myself, it's Thursday. It's too late to start a sermon. But I knew that there needed it to be a sermon today. So I got to the office. Preschool was offering CPR, so I took my CPR class and I thought to myself, all right, I've got Thursday afternoon and Friday to come up with a sermon, because we had plans on Saturday. Well, that sermon wasn't coming. Thursday, I sat there and I said, I've read this scripture, but I need to go focus on something else. Or this other thing came up that's obviously so important, like reading emails. <laughs> well, a friend told me, I was, I was sharing with a friend, I was like, I just can't seem to get started. I just can't seem to, to move forward with this. I'm not feeling inspired. And she told me, um, sometimes we have to let go and believe that God is with us and believe that God's presence is with us even in that moment. And so I did that. I chose to believe that. And I left the sermon for Thursday. I said, I'm done. I know my scripture, but that's it. Well, I sat down Friday morning at my computer and I felt the presence of God leading me, giving me the inspiration I needed to, to come up with a, a sermon. I didn't touch it till Friday, and then the energy and the ideas came from somewhere that I can't explain. Now, if you'll wait until after the 11 o'clock to tell me if this truly was an inspired sermon, I'd appreciate that. <laughs> but I think that we can experience God in different ways. For me, this week, it was this, from out of nowhere, this energy and the, the ideas almost as if God had put the words in my brain. This week I asked on social media a question. I wanted to share some answers with you. I asked other people, I said, how do you feel the presence of God? How do you know that God is with you? How, what are some examples that you have, have had? A friend, Sarah, said, I feel him when I'm interacting with my children. The peaceful feeling of family and love and how they unconditionally love my husband and I. I feel our Heavenly Father during our play or cuddles or daily routines. We mess up sometimes and I know we're not perfect, but I feel God's presence through the love we have for our children and them for us as parents. Claire said, I feel his presence and I hear his voice in the voices of those who walk alongside me in this life. I also feel his presence when I'm listening to music. The breath of the Holy Spirit surrounds me and calms and restores my anxious <clears throat> heart. I had several people tell me the music that they hear is something that reminds them and, and they can feel God's presence. 
Beth said, during my Bible reading, when I read something that applies to what's happening in my daily life is when I feel God's presence. But I also love hearing God talk to me through the songs because a lot of the songs are taken from scripture. And they often go back to the scripture that I've been reading. Someone else said, I feel God's presence when I see someone going out of their way to show kindness to a stranger. It's unexpected and that's what Jesus would have done. Melissa said, he always seems to send me signs or messages when I need them. A word of encouragement from a student, a sign, a billboard, or just a beautiful sunrise and sunset. One of her students told her that day, I'd trust you with my life. It felt like a message, a reminder that she had been set right there to show love. You see, we can experience the presence of God in so many different ways. There's not just one way that we experience God, thank goodness. The truth is, God is always with us. Recognizing that presence is sometimes hard. But just like people mentioned in my social media post, God's presence isn't, isn't limited to one specific person. It's not limited to one specific space. It's not limited to only scripture. God's presence can be experienced in everything, in everyone, and everywhere. Thank goodness that God's not limited to a certain space or time. And that wherever we are, whether we, we feel God's presence intimately day in and day out, or whether we, we long to feel that, thank goodness God is not limited by space or time. In fact, I think the only thing that limits God sometimes is us and our inability to look and to see and to recognize. Now, if you have trouble recognizing God's presence, let's talk because I, I love, I love to point out ways that, that maybe God is working in your life that you, you might not be able to see. I look at each one of you here today and, and I think I've definitely seen God through that person. I've definitely experienced God working in that person and, and therefore, I've experienced God's presence. Friends, in whatever, you, in whatever situation you find yourself, the good, the bad, the happy, the sad, the mundane, or the exceptional, I pray that this week you will take time to look around you and to recognize the presence of God with you. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you that you are with us. Not only are you with us, but you dwell within us, leading and guiding us. God, thank you so much for your gracious presence. And Lord, I pray that everyone hearing these words today would recognize your presence, would recognize the gift that you have given each and every one of us. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Look at the person next to you. We're all different, aren't we? <laughs> Very much so. Um, so God speaks to us in different ways. God speaks to us in a, in a way we understand, in, in a way that he knows we will, we will react to it. And I, the, ask, the, the question I, I want to ask to you this morning is not how much you've given back to God when he speaks to you, but how are we given back when God speaks to you? Are you giving with your hands? Are you giving with your feet? Are you giving back to God with your heart? Are you giving back to God with your 
however God's asking you to give, with your money, with your tithes, with your resources, with your time. God asks us to give back. And God <coughs> uses us as also resources for his kingdom to bless other people. And uh, in this way, we have been generous to, to our community. We have seen so many things that we've done uh, in this church to, to, to fulfill God's call into us and also to, uh, to bless our community, to, to invest generously in the mission and ministry of Jesus Christ through his church, through this church. So um, I want to encourage you to keep listening to God's voice into your heart, to keep uh, uh, making yourself available to be used by God in the way he's asking you to be used. Uh, I want to thank you for, for everything you've done so far for this community. This uh, community here, this little part of Alpharetta has been so blessed to have the church, uh, Midway United Methodist Church, planted here, uh, blessing so many lives. Um, as, as we continue our worship to God, I want to ask you to continue responding in this way. Uh, because when we give, no matter how we give or how much we give, it's an answer to God. It's a response to God in worship. So I want to encourage you to do that. Uh, there are uh, offering plates here uh, up front and also in the back of the church. If you have your tithes and offerings, uh, please uh, deposit your envelope uh, in one of these offering plates. But also, uh, as a form of worship, let us... Let us uh, RSVP and sign up for the, stuff, for the Rise Against Hunger. It's also another way to give back to God in worship, trusting that God will bless not only the, the people that are receiving all these 30,000 meals, but also our lives. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for <coughs> your faithfulness, for your love for us, for your generosity for us. And we... And we now ask you, Lord, to keep talking to us, keep speaking to us. Let us continue filling your presence, Lord, so we can continue responding into worship when you, ask, when you ask us. Lord, we are here, and we want to serve you because we love you. Let us also be generous as you are generous to us. In your name we pray. Amen.
Stay standing and turn in your hymnal to number 463 as we close today with Lord Speak to Me. It has been a joy to be in worship with you today, to see the presence of God within each and every one of you. As you go out today seeking the presence of God, I pray that you will indeed look for God, and I pray that you find him. In the name of God the Creator, God the Redeemer, and God the Sustainer, go in peace. Amen.